present Arthur Lowe, John LaMeshra, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> High Finance, featuring John Lorry, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests, Bill Pertwee, Frank Williams, and Pearl Hackney. <laughs> Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. By the summer of 1942... Hitler's conquered territories now stretch from the frozen wastes of the Arctic southwards to the burning sands of the Sahara and from the rolling Atlantic eastwards to the banks of the Volga. In another sort of bank, Swallow's Bank at Warmington-on-Sea, Sergeant Wilson is in the manager's office stacking sandbags. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> that looks better. What on earth are you doing, Wilson? I'm just tidying up the sandbags, sir. <coughs> there. Well, don't put them on my desk. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, oh dear. Look, Wilson, what's it, what's it you're doing? You're spilling sand all over the floor. I'm sorry, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Van Rien. Yes, Frank, what is it? <laughs> you asked me to tell you the moment Mr. Jones arrived. Well, he's in the bank now, paying in his takings. Fifteen pounds, six and fourpence. And he's presented this cheque for three pounds, two and six. Ah, uh, ask him to come in and see me, will you? Yeah, Mr. Manley. Well, I'd better go then, sir. No, Wilson, no, this is a very delicate matter. I want you here. You stay where you are. All right, sir. And stop making that crunching sound. Well, I can't help it, sir. It's the sound on the floor. We'll go and stand somewhere else. Yes, will you? <laughs> you just told me to stay where I was. Oh, there's no need to take me so literally. Mr. Jones, sir. Morning, Mr. Manley. Morning, Mr. Wilson. You wanted to see me? Yes, Jones. Good morning. Good morning, Jonesy. Pike, go and get Mr. Jones's statement, please. Yes, Mr. Van Rien. Come and sit down, Jones. Oh. Mr. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Van Rien. Ah, this takes me back. <laughs> These are the sand under my foot. Uh, I remember when we was in the Sudan... We had a lot of sand out there, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please sit down, John. Very good, sir. Thank you, sir. Now then, this cheque you've just presented for three pounds, two and sixpence. Ah, yes, sir. That's the wages for my staff. I know it's a lot of money, but if you don't pay your staff well, you can't keep them these days. Yes. But I'm afraid I can't cash it, Jones. Oh? Why not? Insufficient funds. I see. Well, can't you get some more? (laughs) No, no, Jones, no. You have insufficient funds to meet this cheque. Well, give me back the £15, 6 and 4 so I've just paid it in. I can't do that. As you say, you've just paid it in. Well, it's my money. I want it back. <coughs> the only way we can get it back is to write a cheque. All oh, right, I'll write a cheque. <laughs> yes, but I... <laughs> I couldn't cash it, because you've got insufficient funds. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you get a letter from the bank? What bank? This bank. <laughs> I've got Mr. Jones' statement that he's cancelled cheques, Mr. Manreen, and uh, I brought you coffee as well. Oh, thank you, Frank, yes. Put them on my desk. Yes, Mr. Manreen. Look, d- d- don't crunch about like that, boy. It's like chalk on a blackboard. I can't help crunching. It's the sand on the floor. Well, sweep it up. There's a brush and pan in the cupboard. Who, me? Yes, you, boy. Why should I have to sweep it up? Put it on the floor. <laughs> Can you see the sugar bowl anywhere else? Oh, it should be around here somewhere, sir. See if you can find it. Right. Now, Jones, are you sure you didn't get the letter? Well, now I've come to think of it, I did get a letter from the bank on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was here in my pocket all the time, there. But you haven't opened it? No, well, I was just going to when I got an urgent delivery of offal. <laughs> <laughs> it drove it clear out of my mind. See, you've got to concentrate when you get an urgent delivery of offal, you know. <laughs> I'll just have a look at it now. Right, there we are. Well, you needn't bother to read it now. I mean, I can tell you what's in it. Oh, I can't let you do that, Mr. Reed. <laughs> the letter from the bank addressed to me is private. <laughs> Jones, I wrote it. Oh, yeah, of course you did. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Mr. Jones, C- could you lift your feet up, please, for a minute, while I just sweep this bit of sand up? There you are, Pikey. Thank you. Here we are. That's it. You can put your feet down now. Right. Pike, will you not interrupt? You told me to do it. Don't use that tone of voice to be, boy. <laughs> now, James, 
The fact is that for several months you've had an overdraft of £50, and it isn't getting any less. I'm afraid I can't let it go on any longer. Well, I'm sorry to reiterate myself, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> what about the £15, six and fourpence I've just paid in? Well, I've got the cheque here that you paid to United Meat Supplies. It's just been presented. It's for more or less the same amount, so that takes care of that. Frank Lath there. Mm. I, I brushed up all the sand. Where shall I put it? I don't know, Frank. <laughs> oh, it's all right, I know. I'll put it in this little bowl. No, 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 no. I wouldn't do that. That's the sugar bowl. Oh. <laughs> ah, Frank. Found the sugar bowl. Pass it to me, would you? Yeah, but, Miss Henry, Don't argue, boy, just, just pass it. <laughs> Not what you Will you do as you're told? <laughs> yes, Mr. Memory, there you are. Thank you. Ah, brown sugar. Haven't <laughs> <laughs> seen any of that for a long time. <clears throat> Where was I? Yeah, oh, yes. So, you see, Jones, uh, we have a problem. Yes, sir. Well... Oh, this is a nice cup of coffee, Pike. <laughs> really? Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> I bet the Germans don't get coffee like this. Eh? <laughs> What's that stuff called that they drink, Wilson? It's ersatz coffee, I believe, sir. It's made from, uh, made from acorns. Acorns, eh? Yes. Acorns. <laughs> acorns. <laughs> We're drinking stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. That's what we're fighting for, I suppose. Yes, it is. That and a few other things. <laughs> Very good coffee. Must have been the brown sugar that made it taste so bad. <laughs> All right, Frank, we can take the cup away now. Yes, Mr. Men. Now, let's have a look at this statement of yours, Jones. Wilson, take these checks, will you, and read off the amounts. No, it's, a, it's a bit difficult to read, sir. It's, it's got a brown stain on it. Here, let me have a look. Hmm? Oh, it's a liver stain. <laughs> How do you explain that, Jones? Well, liver always leaves a brown stain. <laughs> and, and, and here, Jones, what's, what's this check for £112? And, no, no, that is supposed to be £12. See, the first one's a bit of suet on there. <laughs> the point is, Jones, your affairs are a terrible mess. Well, being a butcher is a messy business, Mr. Manry. Yes. Not all the checks have got liver stains on them. Some of them got quite ordinary stains. <laughs> Tripe makes an interesting stain. They're sort of mottled effect. <laughs> Belly pork, that sort of makes a smear. You no, know. no, 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 no. <laughs> now, can you pay off this £50 overdraft? No. Have you got any sort of security? No. You're rapidly becoming insolvent. Look, I'm sorry I have to tell you this, but the bank cannot honour any more of your cheques until this overdraft is paid off. You wouldn't do that to me, Mr. Mandarin. It's not I who's doing it to you, Jones. It's the bank. I am merely the servant of the bank, carrying out the policy of the bank. Isn't that right, Wilson? Yes, sir. You're merely a servant. <laughs> <laughs> and now, if you'll excuse me, Jones, I'm very busy. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Mandarin. You've been very helpful. I'll go back to my shop and have a think. Yes, all right. Yes, that's, that's what I'll do, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll go and have a think. Weren't you a bit hard on him, sir? You don't think I enjoy this sort of thing, do you? Well, well I really don't know. <laughs> Look, Wilson, in the eyes of the bank, Jones is too big a risk. If I were to give him an overdraft with no security, people would say I'd done it simply because Jones is a member of my platoon. Mm. And then I'd have every Tom, Dick and Harry knocking on my door for a loan. There's a war on you now. Money short. All the same, it'd be terrible if Jonesy were to go bankrupt. I realise that. What can I do? I'm not a hard man, you know, Wilson. No, no, no. <laughs> Some of us are born to be leaders. Others are born to be led. As commanding officer of the platoon, I have to make decisions that could be a matter of life and death. And as manager of this bank, I have to make decisions that involve thousands of pounds. No, no, Jock. Mr. Mandarin was very helpful, but uh, I'm worried to death about it because he told me I was insolvent and the bank can't extend my overdraft. He's taken all my books away to do a complete audition. <laughs> Are you mad? Let Mannering put his nose into your affairs. I tell you, once the bank get their hands on you, you'll squeeze you and squeeze you till the bone dry. <laughs> 
I don't agree. Uh, Mr. Mannion would be the first person I'd go to if I were in trouble. What are you talking about, Godfrey? Jones wouldn't have been in trouble if it hadn't been for my knowing. He's a vulture. You should have come to me for help, Jonesy. <laughs> Will you lend me 50 quid, then? Ah. <laughs> you know the old saying, lend money and you lose a friend. And you're a very dear friend. <laughs> I, I wish I could help Mr. Jones, but I, I just lent some money to somebody else. Well, if I go on like this, I shall end up in Queer Street. Oh, never mind, Mr. Jones. Hey, they may not have any butcher shops there. <laughs> Uh, Jones. Jones. Yes, Mr. Mannering? Would you mind coming into the office? I want to speak to you. It's about you making him bankrupt. We all know. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Speak, sir, could the others come in as well as also, sir? They might be able to help, you see, sir. Oh, very well, I... Hey, Napoleon! Into the office, all of you. Napoleon! Hi, Mannering, didn't you hear me calling you? I'm not used to being yelled at like some lickspittle. Hodges. <laughs> what do you want? I've been trying to get hold of you all day. There's something urgent I've got to see you about. Well, what is it? Well, it's rather personal. I don't think you'd like me shouting it out in front of everybody. You might find it a bit embarrassing. Oh, I'm afraid I've no time to bandy words with you, Hodges. I'm far too busy. All right, then. If that's the way you want it. Be it on your head. Yes, yes, all right. Now, if you don't mind, I've got an important meeting. Come along, man. If you don't want to discuss it with me, I'll have to go straight round to your wife. A wife? How dare you. Anyway, you won't get much change out of her. <laughs> Serve him right if she flattens him. <laughs> right, man. Make yourself comfortable. Pike, right, close the door. Yes, sir. Now, I'll be as brief as possible. The fact is, Jones is insolvent. Now, I've made out a balance sheet, and as my chief clerk, Mr. Wilson will give you the facts. Right, get on with it, Wilson. All right, sir. Well, now, Jonesy, it appears from this balance sheet, which Mr. Manning has done, rather beautifully, I think. Look, get on, get on. <laughs> but it appears, Jones, that your business is just ticking over. The only snag is the £50 overdraft that you owe the bank. So, we've all got to rally around and see how we can get you out of this mess, Jones. Now, now for the purposes of this uh, discussion, I shall be wearing three hats. That's one for each head. (laughs) As I said, I shall be wearing three hats. One as your bank manager, one as your commanding officer, and one as your friend. Heaven help us. (laughs) Excuse me, sir. Yes, Godfrey. What sort of hat will you be wearing as his friend? (laughs) It's a hypothetical hat, Godfrey. I I was going to say you could borrow my Panama. (laughs) That's a friendly sort of hat. (laughs) Thank you, Godfrey. Now, the first thing we've got to do, Jones, is to examine your assets. Mr. Speak, sir, are you now wearing your commanding officer's hat? (laughs) Your bank manager's hat or your friendly hat? My bank manager's hat. Well, just as long as we know, sir, it's a bit difficult without seeing the actual hat, you see. Mr. <laughs> shall I run to your house and get your bowler? Be quiet, Mike. <laughs> Sit your own. Yeah. Wilson. Sir? Read out Jones's assets. All right, sir. Well, uh, uh, there's the van. Yes, that's worth £12. Put that down. Right, sir. Uh, £12. No, 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 Captain Manning. If we sell Jones's van, the platoon won't have any transport. Ah, good point, Fraser. We'll buy it from him. What, for £12? Oh, no, 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 it's far too much. Put £10 down. <laughs> What's next? Uh, the uh, chopping blocks. Ah, yes, yes, the chopping blocks. Mm-hmm. Cut, cut them up and sell them for firewood. That should bring in about a pound. Just a minute, just a minute. You can't go chopping up my chopping blocks. Be quiet, Jones. Right, put down a pound, Wilson. Right. Next? Uh, the scales? Scales, yeah, yes. Four, four pounds, the scales. What else? Well, that's a lot, sir. It comes to £15. Pounds. Well, that's not too bad, you see. If we sell all your assets, Jones, we could pay off nearly a third of your debt. But if you do that, I shan't have any business left. Look, I'm trying to help you, Jones. <laughs> Speaking as your friend. You don't sound very friendly to me. <laughs> well, what do you suggest? Well, I don't know. It's just I can't bring myself to squeeze those poor little orphans. Well, be that as it may have orphans? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, you see, I supply all the meat to the orphanage. Over the past three months, they haven't paid any of my bills. Here they are. See? 
They come to 50 pounds exactly. Oh, really, Jones? This is the limit. I spent hours of my precious time trying to find out where this money has gone, and, and, and you're walking about with the bills in your pocket all the time. Well, I'm Why sorry. didn't you tell me this in the first place? I can't help it, Mr. Marin. I should have told you I know, but I couldn't see those poor little orphans starve. They haven't got any mothers or fathers, you know. I'm well aware of what orphans are. Excuse <laughs> me, Mr. Manning. Yes, Godfrey. The vicar is one of the trustees of the orphanage. Now, perhaps he could help. Ah, yes, that's a good idea. Pike, go and get the vicar. He won't want to be disturbed at this time of night, Mr. Manning. Nonsense. Only half past nine. Go and get him. Once. All right. <laughs> Warming to Home Guard, number one platoon, Captain... A uh, who? Oh, 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 hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth's the matter? What's that? You say Hodge has been molesting you? <laughs> I find that hard to believe. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that, Elizabeth. I mean, <laughs> no, of course, very attractive. <laughs> Wilson, hmm? she says Hodge has been round at the house molesting her. What happens? He must be desperate. Yes. All the way to your house. Now look, Elizabeth. Just calm down. Did he say what he wanted? Elizabeth. Did you say what he wanted? Mm. Just jumped up and down and shouted. Yes, well, he does an awful lot of that. Yes. Then you shouted back. Yes. Oh, well, naturally. Yes. Where is he now? When you wouldn't open the door, he left. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, I think the best thing you can do is to go and lock yourself in the shelter until I get home. Yeah, just, yeah, well, just, just, just a moment, Vic. What's that, dear? <coughs> How will you know it's me? Well, I give my special knock. <laughs> Three long taps and one short. Yeah. <laughs> go, 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 goodbye. Sorry to keep you, Vicar. Just talking to the little woman. <laughs> really, it sounds as though you were contacting MI5. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Manrig, I sincerely hope that what you have to discuss with me about the orphanage is important. I strongly object to being dragged from my bed in the middle of the night. <laughs> Not even dark yet. <laughs> That's got nothing to do with it. One hour's sleep before midnight is worth two after. That's what Mavis always says. She always has to have her eight hours. Really? <laughs> well, I'm sorry if we disturbed your beauty sleep, Vicar. But the fact is, Mr. Jones is in severe financial trouble. Because the orphanage has not paid his meat bills for several months, he's owed 50 pounds. It's not my fault. It's Miss Twelve Trees. <laughs> I haven't had anything from her for five months. <laughs> I don't quite follow this, uh, Vicar. <laughs> It's very simple, really. Every month, Miss Twelve Trees makes a donation to the orphanage. Oh, I see. But we haven't received anything from her for the last five months. Why is that? Well, you see, she owns a small shop in the high street from which she receives ten pounds a month rent, which she in turn donates to the orphanage. But for the past five months, she's had no rent from the shop. Well, why doesn't she ask for it? Mm -hmm. Well, she's such a sensitive soul, she doesn't like to press the shopkeeper too hard. Apparently, he's very poor. Hmm. Which shop is this we're talking about? Mr. Fraser's funeral parlour. <laughs> Fraser? Poor? Where is he, Wilson? He went home some time ago, sir. Right. I'll give him a ring. Warmington 4 dub 5, will you? Soon see what he's got to say about all this. Yes. Hello, James Fraser, funeral director, round the clock service. <laughs> Brass handles extra. <laughs> all right, all right, Fraser. Fraser, this is Captain Mannering here. What's all this I hear about your being so very poor? Eh? Oh, oh well, oh, I'm poor, very poor indeed. <laughs> what about the fifty pounds rent you owe Miss Twelve Trees? Oh, I'm just going to be behind. That's all. Uh, the fifty pounds all ready to pay her, but I lent it to, to somebody else. To whom? Mind your own business and don't go poking your nose into my affairs. You're not squeezing me like you squeeze poor old Jones, eh? That's all. See you in trade tomorrow, sir. <coughs> well, let's tell him. <laughs> Are you any wiser, sir? Wilson, I have never seen such a web of intrigue in all my life. But I'm going to unravel it if it's the last thing I do. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. 
Thank you very much uh, for coming, gentlemen. Would you please be seated? What's all the mystery, then? What's Napoleon up to? Oh, don't worry, Hodges. Mr. Manning will tell you when he gets here. Won't keep you long. Well, you better hurry up. I haven't got all day, you know. I'm on duty in half an hour. It's all rather intriguing, isn't it? I'm glad, sir. Hmm? Mr. Manning found out what's happened to the 50 pounds. Yeah, yeah. I think so, Frank, yes. Exciting, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Just like in that film, hmm? Charlie Chan investigates. Oh. <laughs> see, there was this weekend party at a big country house, you see, mm. and, and one of the guests was murdered. Well, at the end of the film, Charlie Chan got them all in the drawing room and he said, One of you in this room is a murderer. Very soon, I shall reveal his identity. Hey, here's Mr. Manry now. Hmm. Do you think he'll do it like a Chinaman? Don't pretend it. Ah, sir. See? <laughs> Well, thank you very much for coming, everyone. I won't keep you long. Wilson just said all that, Napoleon, so get on with it. Oh, it's you, Hodges. I've got an account to settle with you of a rather personal nature. Yeah, not soon enough, if you ask me. I've been trying to raise that subject for days, so let's get on with it. Very well, I'll come straight to the point. Yesterday, Mr. Jones informed me that he could not pay the bank the £50 that he owed. He's not the only one. Would you be quiet, Hodges? Jones couldn't pay because he, in turn, was owed the money by you, Vicar. Yes. You were unable to pay him because you were owed the money by Miss Twelvetree. That's quite correct, Mr. Mannering. And she, in her turn, was unable to pay because she was owed the money by you, Fraser. That's right. That's right. And you couldn't pay because you'd lent the money to someone else. Uh -huh. That someone else was you, Godfrey. Oh, dear. God <laughs> Godfrey, in turn, had lent the money to Sergeant Wilson. Is all this necessary, Sam? I mean, it's frightfully embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> no need for any of you to feel ashamed. You all acted from the best possible motive. The point is, what did Sergeant Wilson need the £50 for? I now come to the missing factor X. Factor X? Which is you, Hodges. What are you talking about? I intend to show that by your greed and profiteering, you are responsible for this whole miserable affair. Oh, very clever, Mannering. And just how do you intend to prove it? I'll show you. Excuse me one moment. I have to go to my office. Yeah, see, Uncle Arthur? Mm. I knew Mr. Rogers would turn out to be the murderer. Oh, do be quiet. <laughs> Come in, Mrs. Pike. What's all this thing? What's going on here? Good evening, everyone. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Pike. Sit down, please, Mrs. Pike. Thank you, Mr. Mannering. What's she doing here? You'll find out soon enough, Hodges. Now, Mrs. Pike, I'd like you to repeat exactly what you told me earlier. Uh, yes, well, uh, well, it's like this. Mr. Hodges is my landlord. And about a year ago, he said he was going to increase the rent of my house from a pound a week to two pounds. <laughs> what a disgrace. Yes. <laughs> all right, all right, Fraser. Go on, Mrs. Pike. Well, I told him I couldn't possibly afford it, and he, and he told me not to worry. I, I could owe it to him. Then, then last week, he, he asked me to have a drink with him at the Red Lion, and, and he told me that I owed him 50 pounds back rent, but... But he'd forget all about it if I was... If I... I was nice to him. Oh. <laughs> if you excuse me. If you excuse me for a moment, sir. What are you doing, Wilson? I'm just going to have a word with Hodges. Right. Uh, Hodges. You asked for it, you know. <laughs> oh, 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 he hit me, you then. Yes. It's all right, sir. You can carry on now. If you <laughs> are you mad, Wilson? Another sort of this. I'm going to sue you. I'll have you for every. No, oh, sit down, Hodges. Stop making such a fuss. And a little tap. Oh, little tap, little tap. I think he's broken my jaw. Unfortunately, not. He can still talk. <laughs> Gentlemen, please. I'd rather we didn't have any bloodletting in the church hall, if you don't mind. Go on, Mrs. Pike. Well, then I told Arthur, I mean Sergeant Wilson, that I needed the. Pounds for back rent. I think the best thing that you can do, Hodges, is to give that fifty pounds back to Mrs. Pike. You'd no right to increase her rent, and you know it. If everybody was so free with their money, I wouldn't need to raise the rent. Anyway, it's my property, and I'll charge what I want for oh, it. Oh no, you won't. I'll report you to the Chamber of Commerce. You'll get chucked out on your ear for this. As a member of the Chamber of Commerce, I second that. And I third it. You're not a shopkeeper, Godfrey. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, I'll pay it back. Well, go on, then. Give it to Mum now. Go on, go on, give it to no, her. No, no, no. Just a minute. I don't carry 50 pounds around with me. 
I have fifty pounds. You can give me a check. I haven't brought my checkbook. I have. <laughs> I made it out for you. Cash to your account. All you've got to do is sign it. There you are. Ah, you blue beard yeah. Yeah. All right, you can sneer, Fraser. But I've admired Mrs. Pike for years, and I'm not ashamed to say it. But she won't even look at me. She treats me like dirt. Just because she's besotted with fancy pants there. It's him again, Uncle Arthur. <laughs> yes. Would you care to have another one, Hodges? No. <laughs> then sit down and shut up. Oh, Arthur. Oh, you're so masterful. Yes, well. <laughs> There's one thing I simply cannot stand. It's bounders like him. <laughs> here's your check, then, Mannering. And here's your 50 pounds. Now you can give it to Mrs. Pike. All right. Here you are, Mavis. What did you say, Hodges? Go on, Uncle Arthur. Eat him, eat him. <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, I'm at Mrs. M Mrs. Pike. Thank you. There you are, Arthur. You take the money now. Thank you, Mavis. Thank you very much. Here you are, Godfrey, my dear fellow. Thank you for the loan. Oh, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Fraser. Uh, don't mention good for son. Now, we should the rights go to Miss Twelve Trees? Well, I'm afraid she can't be with us. She sends her apologies, but it's her day for the Unmarried Mothers Club. <laughs> um, so I'll take the money from you, Mr. Fraser, and give it to myself. Here you are, then. Thank you. Now, it only remains for me to hand the fifty pounds to you, Mr. Jones. Oh, thank you, Vicar. And now I have great pleasure in regurgitating the money to you. <laughs> Now we're all square. Thank you very much, Jones. Uh, just a minute, Mannering. What is it, Hodges? You think you've been very clever, don't you? But it isn't quite over yet. What are you talking about? I tried to tell you yesterday, but you wouldn't listen. So now I'm going to expose you. Uncle Arthur, I think you're going to have to eat him again. <laughs> <laughs> Mannering, don't let yourself be exposed, please. All right, Jones. I have nothing to fear from Hodges. All right, then. You asked for it. Here it is. Your wife hasn't paid her grocery bill to me for six months. And it comes to exactly 50 pounds. <laughs> yeah, so I'll take it now, if you don't mind, and settle the account. Ta very much. But, 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 but yeah. <laughs> now who's had the last laugh, eh? Ha, 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 ha. I'll send you the receipt. But, but that money belongs to the bank. Yeah, well, it belongs to me now, mate. Now, I tell you what, sir. You'll have to treat it as a loan and give yourself an overdraft. Unless <laughs> <laughs> you consider you're too big a risk. That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft. You heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurier as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Larry, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Labbott, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, Chief Warden Hodges, Frank Williams, the vicar, and Pearl Hackney as Mrs. Pike. High Finance was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snow and produced by John Dias. <laughs> Well, Sergeant Wilson may be masterful at times, but he's struggling to keep control next week when Captain Mannering's laid up in hospital with his ingrowing toenails and the vicar joins the ranks of Dad's Army. Today's episode, High Finance, first came onto the BBC Radio Airwaves in July 1976. And tomorrow at 12, we go even further back down the decades with the 30s humour of the Marx Brothers, given a bit of a modern facelift in Flywheel Shyster and Flywheel. <laughs> Love comedy. Love BBC Seven. And we'll have even more comedy of it later on this afternoon. Michael Williams stars in The Old Dog and Partridge at two. And at half past two, the crew of HMS Troutbridge meet the Loch Ness Monster in the Navy Lark. And there's plenty more laughs still to come before one o'clock with Just a Minute. That's after news of some late night comedy. <laughs> Doing your way. A look back at the places and faces. <laughs> All right, clear the airwaves. This is Chantal taking over on Flash FM. <laughs> You're listening to Flash FM, broadcasting live from a portal in Peckham High Street next to Rumbelow. Flash. <laughs>